So, so during the pandemic, right from the from the very beginning, our life was totally disrupted. We went from being out of the home to just being at home all the time. And so, my wife and I both shifted our businesses to working remotely, and we shifted,、uh, you know, our kids' education to to remote learning. And that was、um, just such a such a big. Disruption. We felt like we were, knew what we were doing beforehand, and then all of a sudden, everything had changed. And so,、uh, it certainly led to an incredible amount of stress and and tension and worry. And, and you know, not only、uh, regarding you know sort of the larger events of what was happening in the world, but certainly in our own home of just like how do we adjust everything that we. We're used to doing. We were no longer doing, and we were having to figure out on the fly how to work remotely, how to take care of、uh, the people who we served in our businesses, and how to provide sort of、uh, simple things like food、uh, for our children. And、um, so it was. It was just as if everything overnight had changed, and it was incredibly、um, difficult to adjust to. So, so since so since March 2020, a lot has、um, changed. I think that certainly the beginning of the pandemic really forced us to have to confront a lot of issues, a lot of tasks and responsibilities. We were having conversations around unseen labor, around things that、um, you know often would by default get.、Um, Completed and handled by my wife, and so certainly by being together,、um, things like taking care of the kids, about like helping the kids, whether it's with their academics or whether it was physical activity, whether it was cooking, cleaning, doing the laundry, all of these things,、um, we really figured out how to communicate more openly and effectively about who was doing what. And while I believe that over the years it sort of continues to fluctuate, like who is exactly doing what,、um, we've been able to just be much more intentional and open about having these conversations. And it's not perfect. Communication has been sort of like the main takeaway. All of a sudden, 2020 happened. The pandemic happened, and I had to make a choice: Do I protect myself and my son, or do I go to work? Do I risk the safety of my clients, or do I keep them at home, making sure that I do all the the risky things, which Should have never been a risk at first, because now going shopping during 2020 could been a, a death sentence. It was very borderline depressing, because we would find ourselves priced out of Seattle, losing our home, having to move to a different city. I would have to make very big cutbacks on what we could and could not do because we didn't have the finances for it anymore. I, even to this day, I now rely on food banks because I'm still digging out of that hole from not being able to work, not being able to have you know that guarantee stable paycheck. Now that we're coming out of it, we're still we still have the title of essential workers, but all we're getting is a hand clap.
So I've learned many things over the past three years. And my family is one of the families that COVID touched. We lost seven people. And if I, if I can't take anything else away, I learned that life is precious. Life is precious. And we all have to realize that we can't just care for ourselves. We have to take care of our most vulnerable people. Their life is just as precious. Our senior citizens, their lives are just as precious because they're the ones that paved the way for us. During the pandemic, um, my job changed in that, you know, of course we were considered essential workers um, as, as a nurse. Um, so, you know, I was almost expected or hired to go to work um, and not miss, and I normally don't miss work. Richard did then was able to stay home, um, which was good for us, but he basically then had to do everything. Um, I worked my three days a week. I was part-time actually before the pandemic. And then during the pandemic, I went full-time, um, basically worked a bunch of extra days. Sometimes I worked four days a week. Um, and sometimes it was required and sometimes it was voluntary, but there were times that there were mandatory over time. When the pandemic hit in March, I was moved to work from home solely. Uh, Melissa, of course, being a nurse, worked long weeks and would work up to 80 hours a week, depending on how busy it was. So I became the basically the full sitter for my kids. So I stayed home, worked at home, and then took care of the kids specifically. While she worked long hours as a nurse. Yeah, I, I mean, I do choose to do that, but I do work a lot of 16-hour shifts. Um, it's almost easier for me just to stay at work. Um, and so then I would get home and sometimes I would work the next day. So I would get home around 11 to midnight and then go to work at um, seven the next morning. I do the brunt of the housework. Um, she does help out for sure when she is home on her days off, uh, but I am kind of the, the sole child care provider for my kids at this point, so. We found out that our daughter has autism or um, somewhere on the spectrum, not quite sure yet. Um, uh, so we, she def started with a sensory modulation disorder and then um, now we've gotten the official diagnosis from a medical professional that she does have that. Um, so in so doing, she is a lot of, um, picks up a lot of Richard's time. Um, and she loves Richard, like Richard is her rock and really like takes care of her really well.